All right, guys, so in today's video, we're going to be looking at the six things that we can learn from the story of Joseph. So find yourself a chair, take a seat, and let's talk. Yo, what is going on, everybody? My name is Ed Carter, and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're already a subscriber to the channel, thank you for joining me yet again for another video. I greatly appreciate your guys' support. However, if you've yet to subscribe to the channel, but you're looking for content surrounding God, growth, culture, and ethics, then do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, become a part of the community, and also hit the little notification bell so that way you guys are notified every single time I go to upload a video. So, with all that being said, let's jump in. Now, the entire story of Joseph can be found in Genesis chapters 37 through 50, but this is the story in a nutshell. Basically, Joseph was sold into Egyptian slavery by his brothers. He spent a lot of time in jail, and when he came out, he ultimately became second in command to Pharaoh. Now, while there is a lot you can learn from the story of Joseph, here are six things that we can take away from his experience. And the very first thing that we learn is that God's ways aren't our ways. The prophet Isaiah puts it this way. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. See, a majority of the time, we have absolutely no idea how God is moving in our lives. And Joseph was probably thinking the exact same thing. Given the fact that he was sold into slavery by his brothers and then placed in jail for something he didn't even do. But throughout all that, Joseph, he kept his faith in God, he remained obedient to God, and eventually God rewarded him for it. So, whenever you're a part of a situation and you have absolutely no idea how God is going to bring you through, best believe, he's going to. It just may not be in the way that you'd expect. Now, the second thing we learn from Joseph's story is the fact that suffering is simply a part of walking with God. Now, despite the fact that Joseph remained committed and obedient to God throughout his entire ordeal, he still suffered, which means that even if we are obedient to God, sometimes we can still experience suffering from it. Paul even says in the book of Philippians that Jesus became obedient to the point of death, even to death on the cross. But despite that, we know that we are doing what God has called us to do, and we can have that peace of mind that God is pleased with us, because as he said, well, as Peter said in 1 Peter, it is better to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. So, if you're walking with the Lord, expect the struggle. Now, the third thing that we learn from Joseph's story is that when it comes to sin, we must flee. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 says, Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. In Genesis 39, we read where Joseph, he actually becomes overseer of Potiphar's house. But while Potiphar is gone, Potiphar's wife starts getting attracted to Joseph to the point to where she wanted to have sex with him. Joseph said no, then she actually tried to make, she tried to make Joseph have sex with her. So she pulls him by his clothes, he runs off, runs out his clothes, runs out the house, and she made it look like that he was trying to rape her, which ultimately led to Joseph being put in prison. How Joseph fled outside, fled away from that temptation, is the exact same thing we need to do when it comes to sin in general. We gotta flee from it. We can't take it lightly, we can't, we can't do it passively, we must flee. Because ultimately, our sin is what separates us from God. So, anytime you're in a position where you're tempted to sin, be like Joseph and flee. Now, the fourth thing that we learn from Joseph's story is the fact that jealousy destroys. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30 says that a sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. The whole reason that Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers to begin with was because of jealousy. They saw that Jacob, their father, loved Joseph more than any of them, which conspired them to sell him into slavery. And as a matter of fact, the very first sin committed after Adam and Eve that involved Cain and Abel involved jealousy because both Cain and Abel, they gave a sacrifice to God. God liked Abel's, he didn't like Cain's, which caused Cain to get mad and kill his brother Abel. Now, of course, Joseph's situation is a little bit different since it involves personal favoritism, but at the end of the day, jealousy ultimately stems from sin, and we should do everything in our power to stay away from it. Now, the fifth thing that we learn when it comes to Joseph's story is the fact that God is with you even in the midst of suffering. In Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6, God himself says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, throughout this entire ordeal, God was with Joseph. When he was head of Potiphar's house, 
when he was second in command to Pharaoh and when he was in jail. Even when he was in jail, he stayed focused on God. He stayed committed to God and he trusted that God knew what he was doing. We have to learn from Joseph's example. Whenever we are going through something that we simply don't understand, that we don't know what's going on or how, or how we're going to get out, we've just simply got to trust in God, know that he's sovereign and that he knows what he's doing. Because we can worry about it and all these different things, but that's not going to do anything but one separates us from God because it shows that we're not trusting them and it's just going to put us in a bad place mentally and spiritually so just focus on God nobody's going to carry you through even though it doesn't seem like it now the sixth and final thing we can learn from Joseph is forgiveness Joseph actually revealed himself to his brothers like midway through the famine and he did not have any anger, he did not have any bitterness, he did not have any resentment. Given the fact that they did everything that they did to him, he just loved them, he hugged them, he kissed on them. But ultimately, and the most important thing is that he forgave them. And the reason why this is so important is because this is exactly what God did for us. We've sinned before, him. we did him wrong, but out of his love for us, he gave his one and only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins, for mine, for yours, that we, that we can have that relationship with him, that sin is severed. Now, trust me, I get it. When it comes to forgiveness, it's not something that happens naturally. We don't forgive naturally. But here's the thing. If there's somebody that's done you wrong and you forgive them, not only are you releasing yourself from any anger, bitterness, or resentment towards that person, you're deepening your relationship with the Lord by forgiving that individual. You have a greater idea of the forgiveness that God has for you, but now the individual you're forgiven now has an idea of what God's forgiveness is actually like. So while it is true that we don't forget, we can forgive. So if anybody's done you wrong, just go to that individual, forgive them, and tell them, yo, I forgive you. I know what you did to me was wrong, but you know what? I'm not going to have that on my conscience. I'm not going to have that within my heart. I forgive you. Just release all that anger, release that bitterness, and let the love of God shine to that individual. Well, guys, that's it for another video. Thank you for joining me yet again. I really do appreciate your guys' support. Also, let me know down in the comments below, is there anything that I may have missed? What have you learned from reading Joseph's story? What's this something that you've taken away from this video or what's something that you would add? Let me know and let's talk. Also, if you feel this video could bless or encourage somebody else, Please share it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you've yet to subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel and become a part of the community today. And otherwise, guys, I will see y'all next week, Lord willing. But until then, y'all have a good day. God bless. Much love. Take care.